Also, there were Chinese herbalists, and there were pharmacists, and there were doctors. And that's part of the, that's part of the reason that you find Chinese settlements and red light districts almost always together, because um, it was a symbiotic relationship. Of course, these are both rather outcast populations, and so it's kind of normal that they might gravitate together. But the women of the red light district relied on the Chinese for cheap and hearty meals. The noodle parlors were very cheap, but they were you know, was nutritious and hearty. The women also relied on the doctors and herbalists and uh, pharmacists for um, treatments for a venereal disease that Western doctors didn't have also for uh, birth control, which Western doctors didn't usually espouse, and also um, opium, which, you know, was part of the Chinese culture. And um, the women used opium under the care of a Chinese physician or pharmacist. When it's taken just to the point of overdose, it causes spontaneous abortion. So there are reasons for those districts to be together, and it's almost always true. The one exception is Anaconda, and that's because there were so many widows in Anaconda, and the laundry business was so competitive that they, they passed ordinances that the Chinese couldn't open laundries hmm. so that the women could who you know had children to raise could actually make a living doing that and so Chinese in Anaconda early on went to Butte or elsewhere.